think I think you got this. Okay. <laughs> no coaching needed. <laughs> okay. This is the Steely Podcast. I've already forgotten what engage I was supposed to us. say. Oh, engage with us. Okay. <laughs> this is the Steely Podcast. Engage with us. The Steely Podcast. The experience of learning. S T O I. I never say Steely. Really? But I, I guess steely? I should adapt. Yeah. I've been saying Steely. Yeah. It's yeah. just easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Steely. Stilly. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Stilly podcast. We are once and for all, maybe. Oh, I, I'm getting some looks. We're gonna we're gonna keep it with the Stilly. 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 The Stilly. Stilly. The Stilly. Yeah. Stilly. What if we What if we this emphasize is the, the stellar L? Stellar Stilly. Wait, Stellar Stilly is a thing. We can't call it that. Okay. Wait. <laughs> the Stilly podcast. The experience of learning. Join us on a journey of experiential learning. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is kind of clarify this definition of experiential mm-hmm. learning. Um, and one way that you might think about experiential learning is that it is applied learning. So mm. it does not have to involve um, an extensive field study or an internship or um, really even leaving the classroom. But typically, experiential learning provides students with an opportunity to apply several different skills in and around a given content area and to create some kind of product. The idea with experiential learning is that you're going beyond uh, just rote memorization or a specific um, content area and field of study and that you're bringing together a, a wide array of skills. And that's why employers like to see evidence of for example, internships, but they like to see evidence of some kind of um, applied learning because they know that that requires you to bring together lots of different skills, maybe soft skills, um, writing, written expression, verbal expression, um, media production, lots of different uh, real world things that employers want their, um, trying to think of a word other than employees, that employers want to see in the workplace, um, but they maybe extend uh, outside of traditional classroom learning. What do experience and experiential have in common? Learning, find out how today. (laughs) The journey of a lifetime, experiencing experiential learning. In this segment, Grace Helmick discusses experiential learning with our student partners. Welcome back to the Steely Podcast. I'm Grace Helmick. I'm Zario Anthony. I'm Jess Atkinson. I'm Ryan Harp. And today we are talking about experiential learning, learning experiences, how they enrich us and the world around us. When we say the phrase experiential learning, what experiences come to mind? (laughs) I think one for me was last year, Agency 1693, I don't know if you guys heard of it. It was on campus. It was like a student-led uh, marketing agency. And um, yeah, that was my first like on-campus like work experience really. And it was really fun. Like I essentially everything that I did like outside of like school when it comes to like marketing was now done in school with other students. So it was nice to finally meet like other students that were doing the same things that I was doing and working in teams and everything. So it was a good experience. Just out of curiosity, what, and this can be kind of for anyone, what differentiates for you between something that is truly an experiential learning experience and something that's just like, I don't know, like I I feel like there's some classes you get into where you just like have to memorize content. Like, what makes something an experience as opposed to just sitting there and mindlessly absorbing? Like, what is, like, the element that, like, turns it into something that's an experience for you? I think the class... Sorry, did you want to... Oh, no. I think the class kind of has to, you know, give you the opportunity to make something for yourself or plan Mm -hmm. something for yourself or be able to take on, like, a certain role within like a group project or something like that. Um, Yeah, I don't know if I have more words on that, but I think that you really need to have the flexibility to be Mm -hmm. able to take on a specific role rather than just like, 
hey, absorb all this content and then spit it back out at me. So essentially, you doing something is what makes an experience. Yeah. Kind of. Like if you just sit there and you don't have to take that knowledge anywhere, it's not an experience. You know, yeah. the, the act of doing is a large part of experiential learning. I think uh, a large part of experiential learning, or maybe, you know, less so uh, an element of experiential learning, but more so what it looks like is maybe the people doing it need to look a little silly while they're doing it. And what I mean by that is, well, this podcast is theoretically experiential learning. And I don't know about you guys, but with these headphones and the mm -hmm. mics, I, f I feel a little silly or out of place. And it's sort of like a, a fish out of water thing. And I think that that actually is an indication that it's working, mm -hmm. that you're, you're coming into a new role. role. I think uh, another example of that would be, I, I don't know what class this is for or what project it is, but last few days I've seen people out uh, on the Crimdell like pond area, like in a kayak, like getting, collecting measurements. And, you know, I'm sure that's very important research, but it just looks interesting to be mm -hmm. doing that in such a public area. And I like that. And I think that that is what experiential learning needs to look like. It needs to look kind of out of place at times. Yeah, it's like almost needs to be an experiment. Like there could be a fail factor. I think it's something maybe we don't think about, but you know, when we're trying something, when we're taking knowledge, and as Jess was saying, as we're doing something with it, there could be a chance that what we do doesn't actually pan out or become productive but that's okay is what i'm gathering from you like it's okay that maybe we look silly or we fail while doing it mm -hmm. and then i'll also just add like on to what's already said it's just hands-on learning and like you said like just jumping into something new like how they just like jumped us into doing podcasts when we first got um here to steely so it's just that hands-on experience and trying things that you aren't used to uh, one thing that I really do like is within my classes when the teachers like make us do a project that I haven't done before or um, like randomize our groups. Now you have to talk to people you don't know. Um, that kind of like that engages me more rather than like just having a class where we don't do projects or anything and it's literally just notes. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, were you going to say something? I was just going to say like kind of riffing that – you know, I feel like I haven't had a lot of jobs or, like, positions that I would classify as, like, an internship, but I still think that they are good, like, work experience because, like, I am learning these skills. I am being put in, you know, just kind of, like, thrown into it, and I'm learning how to, like, deal with and manage um, all these things that, like, I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> So I feel like being able to kind of manage other people and figure out those skills for myself is still work experience, but in a different way. Yeah, That's no, nice. I think, you know, those soft skills are so important because, and maybe this is like not a common misconception, but I feel like as an undergraduate student, like up until you leave college, your entire life has been kind of planned out for you. Like you've had structure, you've been put into this, into that, into that, and you just like check off the boxes, go through the motions. But something that I don't think was talked about how when you get into the quote unquote real world, whatever that means for everyone, there is a lot less structure and there's a lot more experimentation and a lot more figuring it out. And there's a lot less rules you know, it, it kind of is just being thrown into situations where you're like, I don't know if I was trained for this, but I have to learn on the go. And so I think that there is some real value in having, even if it's not an internship or an externship, some kind of work experience where you are kind of put in the deep end. You know, it's it can be very scary, but I do think that just in life, like nothing is planned out, nothing is as rigid as we think and there's some serious value in being able to navigate that and being able to take risk and being able to fail and in being able to take something away from any experience that you have join us on the journey of experiential learning as students experience experiential learning for themselves i think 
like also something that you know is helpful that we didn't talk about that is implicitly implied implicit anyway um is having guidance you know i think sometimes it's valuable just to be thrown into something but a lot of times with these student orgs you have people you look up to that you can kind of learn from and you see how they're doing things or even like in internships and externships you know maybe you have a mentor that you can kind of look to and see how they operate and so you know i think if we're going to sum it all up you know what is experiential learning and how do we make that valuable and how do we bring in truly valuable experiences to this university i think we pull in things that have longevity that we can take our passions and that we can run with for an extended amount of time that we can really invest in we have mentors and people that we can look up to who are guiding us along who let us know that it's okay to fail it's okay to try things but you know we have this kind of lighthouse that we're looking to of you know this is what i'm trying to get to um, you know, and thirdly, I think also having resources is extremely important, whether that's financial compensation or credit hours for a course, having some sort of resources so that we're able to do what we want to the best of our ability is vital. And I do want to shout out our campus does have some great resources. I think of the Media Center. For me personally, that really grew me as an artist, being able to have access to equipment that I would have never had access to. Um, you know, even being able to work for different departments like Steely you know, gaining experience with podcasting, interviewing, consulting. Those are things that I wouldn't have had outside of this department. Um, and so I think, you know, kind of to come to a close, what's so important about experiential learning is that it enriches us as individuals and it enriches, you know, our portfolios and it also enriches our worldview. And so, you know, how can we bring meaningful experiences into the university and into our own lives so that we can in turn invest more into them and put that back out into the world around us. Uh, okay, go for it. Better be the Steely Podcast. Engage with us. <laughs> now we're just going to sit here and listen. <laughs> Which, welcome back to the Steely Podcast. I'm Grace Helmick. And I'm James Turner. So um, I was just, I also have to apologize to all listeners. I have so much caffeine in my system right now. So I'm going to be a little gabby today, but. I'm wondering how many more times you have more than I do. Because I have about 90 milligrams, but it seems like you might have a thousand. <laughs> well, I've got like essentially brewed coffee, espresso, and then cold brew all okay. combined into one cup. So there's, there's just a lot happening right now. It's a dangerous mix. So. What would you say, just kind of reflecting on your time here at William & Mary, mm -hmm. has been one of the most meaningful experiences to you? I know that's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. Um, most meaningful, I would have to go with um, meeting my friends. So I think meeting friends at William & Mary is a very important aspect that not a lot of people might really mention. Um, but, you know, whether you meet your friends through class or whether you meet them outside of class or doing sports or whatnot, um, I think it's really important at William Mary to make friends because when you graduate, a lot of my friends that have graduated still live together, and I think that's definitely been a formative experience for them, and I think that's awesome. That's something that I'm interested in doing. Um, but also, you know, making friends here in your classes that you can work through problems together, figure out class scheduling together, um, you know, deal with the, just the normal adjustments to college. I think that's been a really huge thing for me. Yeah, so in a way, like, part of what makes this learning experiential is being able to experience it with more than one person. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be really important because sometimes, you know, I think we question, like, is this normal or is this how this experience is supposed to feel? Or, you know, am I alone and struggling with this, that, or the other? And having someone that you can kind of go to and be like, hey, like, this reading is it just me or right. is it like in another language because i i don't understand right. this you know can be really helpful not only to having people that you can sympathize with and that you can kind of understand and be on the same page but also i feel like there's a lot of learning that happens outside of the classroom mm -hmm. within our friendships that we don't even we don't even realize you know i think it's kind of like you know you work together to study or you work through a problem together or you even so much as like planning your day-to-day -day activities, you know, okay, how are we going to fit this in? Mm -hmm. And those are skills that, you know, we build, 
here on campus that have nothing to do with the classroom that apply in so many different ways. Yeah, and something I found too is, you know, we've, I've been lucky to have a little cohort of friends that I've met when, like, very on, early on in college, but I think the ability to be malleable and um, make new friends in classes, whether you need to, you know, like, oh my gosh, I know no one in this class, like, I feel lonely here, that skill to just reach out to somebody, hey, like, have you done the homework? Like, do you know how to do this? Blah, blah, blah. Um, making those friends, whether they're a tutor or whatnot, um, that's been really helpful for me too, just being able to, I guess, expand my bubble. And maybe I don't hang out with them. Maybe I hang out with them for a semester or something like that. But, you know, I'll always know them, and I, I appreciate those connections here too. Yeah, and I think that something that we kind of haven't said explicitly that is really important, and especially when I think about how this applies to the workplace, it's really important to have people around your age or within like your same kind of life experience also experiencing something with you. Mm. It can be very isolating to feel like you are the only 20 something year old Mm -hmm. um, and everyone else is 15 plus years your senior. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know for me sometimes it's like, oh, like, can I ask this question? Is this a stupid question? Am I gonna get made fun of? Like, should I know this already? Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, when you have people your own age, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's different. Like you're able to kind of be like, hey, so this, this one, Excel. Do you know how to use this? Like, am I the only one that just puts in numbers and what we're doing here? What we're doing here? There's a lot of value in having friends and people your own age mm-hmm. to kind of go through it with you. I think that's really important. And you know, your friends here are in certain programs and things like that. But I think William Mary is super cool because it has so many different programs that you can be in, and so you can make, meet a lot of different people through those avenues. Um, but you know, something that I've learned through experiences with different groups and different um, like resource centers where they're looking to pair you up with internships, whether it's the business school or um, the, the career center, the Cone Career Center. It's just don't be afraid to up, like put yourself out there, just apply yourself. Because the, the scariest part is just that first step. Um, so, you know, a lot of people are scared to make new experiences or, or just put themselves through the door and see what happens. Um, and so, you know, I've found that the more you just enter the new realm and try something new, then you never know what can happen. So that's a new experience in itself and just being open to new experiences can open a lot of different doors. Yeah, no, and I mean, honestly, when I reflect back on my favorite classes I took as an undergrad at William & Mary, Mm -hmm. a lot of them were those random, like, I'm just gonna experiment. I took one course with Professor Dominique in the music department and it was called Messy Music. And it was basically looking into the genre of noise. I didn't know it was a genre, but it is. Okay. Um, and using modular synthesizers and um, like basically just using things such as like feedback, like things that typically in music you're like, oh, this is a bad thing. Like gotta right. adjust my equipment so I don't get all this feedback. But no, it was like make music with the feedback. Put you know these infinite loops on like this guitar pedal and you know play with static and. Hmm. Even, I remember one presentation, I literally had the class like banging on the desk, like hitting the walls, just screaming at random (laughs) points and intervals, and we created music from that. And, you know, I was an English major and a film major. That is never something (laughs) that I would have taken Mm -hmm. had it not been for, you know, this kind of liberal arts system that we have and this ability to experiment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the lessons that I took from those classes, I've applied and what I do now, you know, especially I think when it comes to like the messy music course, that's when I first really learned how to do audio editing and manipulation and, you know, any kind of film or video project I do now, I feel like I've got a leg up when it comes to making the audio really good Mm -hmm. because I understand how to create these sound scores and how to make sure that, you know, my speakers being heard and to make sure that there's, you know, ambiance of the room underneath and all these other things that Maybe I just wouldn't have learned had I not banged on some chairs and screamed at random yeah. intervals, you know? To that point, you mentioned earlier that you just recently graduated, so congratulations. Thank you. But I'm curious what you think the difference between experiential learning in college versus your new career has mm. been. That's a really great question. And, you know, I was kind of talking a little earlier with the other group about this, but I think something that we don't realize is our entire lives, we are kind of given a, 
a path to follow. Mm-hmm. You go to elementary school, and then you go to middle school, and then you go to high school. And then you know, most people will apply to a college, and then you go mm-hmm. to college. And, you know, everything's kind of been roadmapped out for you. And even within college, you know, you take these classes, and you check these boxes. Right. Once you graduate, that all goes away. There is no infrastructure. There is no one telling you this is the path you take to get to where you want, Mm -hmm. which is incredibly terrifying, but also incredibly freeing. Mm -hmm. And I think something that I wish I would have applied more to my undergrad is this ability to be flexible and to look at non-traditional paths to get to where you want to go. You know, because I think for me, experiential learning in the workforce as opposed to in college has meant taking who I am and what I love and my passions and my skills Mm -hmm. and finding ways to use that to push a business objective Mm -hmm. or to um, create a marketing strategy. Um, I never took business classes in undergrad and right now I'm actually taking an online digital marketing class because, well, the real world is business. Spoiler alert, Mm -hmm. if you didn't know, business is all the world is. Forget all your other majors. Just kidding. Um, you can cut that this out, Roy. coming from a film major. I know, right? <laughs> um, but, you know, within digital marketing, I've learned how I can use storytelling, how, mm-hmm. um, you know, I can bring my personality into it. And, you know, that's something that has been a steep learning curve because I think, you know, we're so used to being told there's a right way. Mm-hmm. But once you graduate, that all goes out the window. There is no right way. No one knows what they're doing. We're all figuring it out. And, you know, I think having that, once again, that willingness to just try things Mm -hmm. and to maybe fail. Maybe you make a joke and you think it's really funny and no one laughs and you're just kind of like, okay. (laughs) Note to self, that was not effective. (laughs) Um, You know, it's it's all about trial and error. And I think Mm -hmm. that the more that we can encourage ourselves to do that in all aspects of life, the better prepared we are for the real world because there's a lot less structure than we think. Yeah. Join us on the journey of experiential learning as students experience experiential learning for themselves. In this next segment, Grace Helmick interviews Steely's own Diana Tysinger. Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Grace Helmick. And I'm Diana Tysinger. And today we're going to be talking about experiential learning. So, Diana, I am a very disgruntled student. That's always been my impression of you, yes. Yes. I'm very upset because I would love to get some real-world working experience, but every internship or externship that I look to is not unpaid. And I'm sorry, but I really can't afford to take off a summer from a part-time retail job that I'm working in order to get this experience. But I know that when I graduate and I start applying to jobs, they're going to want experience. So what do I do? You know, it it, it seems like there's no avenue for me to get this kind of help so I can get this experience that I really want without having to sacrifice financially or take some risk that I really don't feel prepared to take. So many great points to unpack there. Um, All right, so the first thing that we want to do is kind of clarify this definition of experiential Mm -hmm. learning. Um, And one way that you might think about experiential learning is that it is applied learning. So Mm. it does not have to involve um, an extensive field study or an internship or um, really even leaving the classroom. But typically, experiential learning provides students with an opportunity to apply several different skills in and around a given content area and to create some kind of product. The idea with experiential learning is that you're going beyond uh, just rote memorization or a specific um, content area and field of study, and that you're bringing together a a wide array of skills. And that's why employers like to see evidence of, for example, internships, but they like to see evidence of some kind of um, applied learning because they know that that requires you to bring together lots of different skills, maybe soft skills, um, writing, written expression, verbal expression, um, media production, lots of different uh, real world things that employers want their, um, trying to think of a word other than employees, that employers want to see in the workplace, um, but they maybe extend uh, outside of traditional classroom learning. Got you, so being able to recite X equals negative B plus or minus square root 
of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a is actually not what you know experiential learning is about? Yeah, you lost me at x, to be honest. Oh, okay. But um, right. Um, employers want to see that you can take that learning from the textbook or from the lecture and then do something useful with it. So um, we really encourage, we had a workshop, um, was it last week, two weeks ago? Time is a fuzzy construct. Um, we had a workshop where we looked specifically at introducing experiential learning or applied learning opportunities um, in small ways in the classroom. And part of this is an equity issue, right? Because mm-hmm. not every student can afford to take the summer off of their job. I do want to point out that we have some resources here at William & Mary, and I don't know if other institutions have similar resources. Um, we have the um, FUSE funding. It's funding for unpaid summer experiences. You can contact Lisa Randolph. She's the Assistant Director of Experiential Learning. She um, has she has more information about FUSE funding. So the other avenue students need to look into is the opportunities that they have uh, in their classes to maybe produce something um, outside of a traditional paper. Now, you're not going to have this opportunity in every class. Some classes are very structured, and the um, assessments are pretty set. It's a final exam or it's a final term paper. Um, But where there is latitude and where professors are flexible, I encourage students to work with their professors to find ways to bring to bear some of those other skill sets that they want to develop. Um, Sometimes it can be the push that you need as a student to learn about something like podcasting if you pitch to your professor, hey, instead of the final paper, is it possible for me to do, uh, you know, a video presentation or record a podcast episode and submit that as the artifact of my learning? And then you can turn around on your resume and update that to reflect that, hey, here's a whole other skill set that I developed through this experiential learning opportunity, this applied learning, um, where I created a product that you can look at, but I also learned how soundboards work, and I learned about uh, framing videos, and maybe learn to work as part of a collaborative team because somebody else was doing the lighting part of it and somebody was on sound. Um, I guess one last thing that I'll say about this is, you know, your, your undergraduate years are really a time to explore and experiment mm-hmm. in sort of a safe, low-risk way. So if there are potential career paths that are interesting to you and that you want to explore, advocate for yourself. You know, see if there are ways in your classes in small ways or beyond your classes in your extracurriculars to explore what it would be like if you were doing some of the tasks that are associated with that career. Um, And if you don't know what is it like to actually be a photojournalist, then reach out to our alumni network. We have such Mm -hmm. a huge alumni network that you can access through LinkedIn. And if you connect with somebody who is a William & Mary alum that's already in that field, they are gonna be so, in most cases, like supportive, encouraging, inviting you to shadow them or interview them. Even if it's a Zoom interview from your dorm room, these are ways that you can uh, get a little bit of a glimpse of what that would be like. And like we talked about in our workshop the other week, um, you know, even failure is learning. Mm -hmm. So even if you go down the path of exploring, oh, maybe photojournalism is the thing that I want to do with my life, and then you find out, actually, I hate that, you still learned something and gained a skill set. So um, definitely use this time, this rare, precious time Mm -hmm. of an undergraduate to explore those opportunities. All students considered. Engage with us. This week's podcast has been brought to you by the letter I for imagination. Visit us on our website at steely.wm.edu.